Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. Hi, I'm Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique real estate firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing consultants who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my real estate team member, Mary Baker, and I, along with the director of Boston Connect Real Estate, Melissa Wallace, provide you with our unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We like to mix it up sometimes, so not only will you hear our perspective on real estate topics, but you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of some of our real estate agents at Boston Connect Real Estate and the preferred professionals that we trust. Be part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team or one of the dedicated agents at Boston Connect Real Estate to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with us at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. This is Sharon McNamara. You are, of course, listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Uh, I am here in studio with my, I almost said my BFFs. We are BFFs. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I am here with my team mates. I got Mary Baker. Hello, hello. Hi. And I have Melissa Wallace. Hello, hello. Hello. And um, we have a really sort of interesting topic tonight. To be honest, it sort of could be become controversial in a way, not controversial. So I just want to start out by saying just a little sort of... Um, disclaimer? Yeah, disclaimer type thing. Or that it's all it's all in good fun. We all have opinions. Yeah. it's Everybody, everybody has a different yeah. opinion. So I know we have a lot of real estate agents that listen to our show. So mm-hmm. if you are a real estate agent with, you know, either Boston Connect Real Estate or another firm... Um, um, feel free to call in to have a conversation with us about this as well. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this topic. Um, but I'm going to give you the number, 781-837-4900. And um, again, we'd love to hear what your impression is. Uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight is the different types of listings you can have if you're putting your house on the market. So kind of like uh, rather, so let's not say listings, the different different ways Selling. you can sell your house. Exactly, okay. yeah. And, th- and when I said on the market, that was sort of a mistake because some people choose not to do it that way. 100%. Yeah, so I had a good conversation this morning with Rob Hackla on the morning show. I did a little uh, sneak peek of what we were going to be discussing. I actually really like calling into him because yeah. he's like, we have Mary Baker. I know, he's he sounds so, so professional. And I yeah. love it. I told him he needed His to bottle. radio voice. He had to bottle his energy because okay. I sort of had the winter blues this morning. Oh. Um, I call him from my closet. Why your closet? Because it's all like I have a ton of clothes in there so the sound is better oh, than being I, in my I kitchen. Mean, I'm usually <laughs> in my bathroom so maybe I should do something else. Yeah, I should um, be going in the closet. Yeah, go in your closet. You have a big room as your closet. No. But um, So what we're going to be talking tonight about is you know, what are the pros and cons of different types of listings? What is agency? We'll get into that a little bit. I think that's a great topic. Yeah. So where we would probably start is to discuss agency and what that means in the state of Massachusetts. It's mandatory that we discuss what agency Absolutely. is with um, all of our clients on our first meeting with them. And they just changed the rules on this too. And um, they have a new form. So if you're meeting with someone via Zoom, you also have to have that signed. I did not know that when, yes. when did you hear that charlie burke told me about it and i think it was when i had covid and i'm just remembering it now <laughs> COVID brain, <laughs> yeah covid brain for sure um so that's what we're going to okay. talk about you know and rob like he had two examples right off the bat this morning about yeah he goes you know so sometimes you'll see you know some companies or firms and again i am not saying that what they're doing is wrong it's just different. It's okay. just different. So everybody has to do what is right for them. 100%. And we have our opinion on what is the best way for you to get the most eyes on your home. Mm-hmm. And 
Do you know I know? And again, so just because of antitrust rules, we cannot discuss commissions. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I wonder how that works, though, because it's really just us here. No one else is talking to us. We're not having a discussion with anybody. So I anyways, I, I just don't we're, even want to. We're wanna... discussing amongst ourselves on a platform yeah. that can be recorded. <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to breach any no. rules and antitrust rules for sure. But um, I just think that, you know, when it comes to compensation, that maybe that seems to be the incentive for some sellers to either do a FISBO. And why don't we have a contest? Want to do a contest? Sure. What are we doing? Um, <laughs> let's say the first, per, or like, well, I don't know, the third person to call into the studio that knows what FISBO stands for, mm. that they'll win. What do we got? Um, Whatever you we got want. A $20 <laughs> gift card to Dunkin' Donuts. Okay, perfect. So, George, you're with us, right? I sure am. All right. Well, nice to see you, George, or nice to hear from you. Um, so to our listeners out there, uh, we're going to do a contest. We're going to, uh, one of the topics tonight is FISBO. So if you can tell us what FISBO stands for, you're the third caller into the WATD studio, 781-837-4900. You will receive a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. But we want you to say hello to us. You can't just give your information to George. So you have yeah. to say hello to us. Okay? Yeah. And tell us what you think the answer is. Okay. Um, did you say we're live on Facebook? We're I live do not, on you Facebook. tell everybody all that stuff. We are live on Facebook, so be sure to like Boston Connect Real Estate and McNamara Broker Team. We have shared everything to all of the Connect pages, so if you're a member of any of the surrounding towns Connect pages, uh, you can see us there. So if you are shy and don't want to call into the studio but want to be a part of the discussion, you can leave a comment there. Um, Mary, did you talk about why you have a lisp? Because we were going to say no. that. No. <laughs> you could have taken I them out for the show. Mary's going to have a list for the next year. So uh, <laughs> just be prepared to listen to that. Give myself a pretty, pretty smile. <laughs> we oh, have a caller. Call. All right. Perfect. Oh, Bonnie, Bonnie from Pembroke. Pembroke. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hi, Bonnie. How are oh, you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. <laughs> Did you, uh, were you calling in to give us the answer to what FISBO is, or are you just calling I, in to be part of I the was. Discussion? I have a guess. I hope I'm right. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. FISBO for sale by owner. Yes, it is. Yes, ding, it ding, is. ding, ding, ding. Woo! Yay, All the bells ding, and whistles are going off of Bonnie. <laughs> Yay, Bonnie. <laughs> so, Bonnie, uh, just make sure that you give uh, George your contact information for us, and we will make sure to send that uh, your way. Did he say that Bonnie was from Pembroke? Pembroke. So, Bonnie, do you know where our office is in Pembroke Center? I do. Yeah, so you know what? We can leave it right at the front desk for you, and you can come by at your leisure to come pick it up. Oh, fabulous. Thank you. You girls are awesome. I love your show. Oh, oh thanks thank for you. Listening. you. Let me I ask you Mark. a question. Oh, you I know, know Mark. Mark. I'll say hi when I come over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mark actually was just here. I don't know. I think he went he over just... to go food shopping or something. Oh, that's um, a riot. Thank yes. you so much. You're welcome. Well, we look forward to meeting you in person. So come on by anytime and you can get that gift card, okay? Thank you very much. And we will have All a right. great show. Take care, ladies. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. But so, bye. so that was Bonnie from Pembroke, and she guessed for sale by owner is FISBO. So that is one way that you can sell your house. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, that is one way you can sell your house. But we are going to be talking about the different ways that you can be selling your house, not just on the market, so say, mm-hmm. so to quote say. Quote, unquote. Quote, unquote. And this was brought up because of a conversation that we have here a lot at Boston Connect Real Estate amongst ourselves. We're going to actually be doing in a discussion panel tomorrow at the office with some of our agents. Um, just sort of, we like to be in the know. What's going on? What are things that you're seeing? Are you... What are the trends that you're and seeing? And it's not always right positive. There are some frustrations right now in the industry with uh, you know mark things being sold off market so mm-hmm. um, that is one way to sell your house is uh, not to go into MLS and to sort of sell it off market not necessarily a, a FISBO um, you, you could hire an agent to be selling your house but we'll get into that um, that mm-hmm. all that kind of fun stuff and one of the reasons why there's all these you know you're seeing lots of commercials again as a disclaimer we're not saying that any of those are wrong we're just you know, we sort of want to be the the other Sound, side. We're, we're, well, a little bit of a sounding board, though. Like, we're just discussing everything. Yeah, so you understand. And again, if any agents are out there listening to us and they want to disagree with us, we are happy to have an open discussion with you. I mean, we're all friends, no matter what color logo we wear. Um, but, you know, like I said, Rob had brought up today, you know, some of the, you know, commercials and, you know, um, conversations or pieces that you get in the mail that say, you know, we buy, you know, your house, 
and if we can't sell your house in this many days and yeah. we have buyers for your house, all of those types of approaches, um, you know, he said one thing, like he gets letters, like we have somebody who wants to buy your house in your neighborhood. Oh, he's getting letters. He's getting letters. Yeah. So I, you know, we ex- will have that conversation right now about okay. that. So, um, I think maybe do we start with, I think the best place to start is with agency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you guys want to go over sort of what your approach is when you're talking with clients or potential clients when it comes to agency? Sure. Sharon, I think you're the best at Okay. Yeah, I can discuss agency. So in the state of Massachusetts, it is a requirement for uh, real estate agents who are licensed with the state to abide by the laws of the state. And one of them is that in your first introduction or meeting, it's really introduction now. So even if it's like over Zoom or something like that, you have to discuss with the buyer or seller, the potential client, um, the different types of agency that there are in Massachusetts. So they is seller's agent, which means you are the one that works for the seller only. You as an agent are the only person that represents. Now, if it's a team, it's the whole team. Um, and then buyer's agent, the you represent the buyer. So that's pretty clear. There's also dual agency. So dual agency would be we have a listing and you are also our buyer and you buy our listing. Mm -hmm. That's dual agency. And there's all kinds of requirements that go along with that, like consent to notice of. And then there's facilitator, Mm -hmm. which basically is nothing. You have no obligation to anybody. You're just sort of facilitating the transaction. Okay. So those, you're not missing any, right? No, No. I don't think I am. So we are a designated agency firm, Boston Connect is. I would say the majority of the firms that our listeners are familiar with are all designated agency, which means we have a designated agent who works as a seller's agent or a buyer's agent, Mm -hmm. okay? Um, Some people find that it's very controversial to do dual agency. We as a team don't seem to have a problem with that because we sort of... I, so divide and conquer type thing, like yeah. we separate, you know. Um, but what was I going to say about that? Some people are uncomfortable with it, but it, we could get into a lot on just this topic, by the way. But as a listing agent, if somebody comes into an open house and they don't have representation, we would say, okay, well, we represent the seller. Mm-hmm. So anything that you say to us that's personal, confidential, or financial, we are then legally obligated to discuss and disclose that with the seller. Okay. If somebody walks in the door and says, I don't have buyer representation, I want to buy this house and I want buyer representation from that point forward, anything that that buyer tells you, and you can, you can say, no, I don't want to, you can give it to another agent in the office or you could do something like that. Anything they say that's personal, confidential or financial has to stay with you, which means we can't tell the seller anything. But vice versa, anything that the seller has disclosed to me during the whole process of listing the house, selling the house, I mean, it could be a a number of things. Maybe they're moving to another state. Maybe they are sick. Maybe they are divorcing. Whatever the situation is, we're not um, obligated or can we uh, give up that confidentiality that we have with our seller. So an example might be, we got a new listing. It's on the market for six hundred thousand dollars. Seller says, "You know what? I honestly, if I could get five hundred, I'd walk away." Yeah. We can't disclose that to a buyer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it has to be in, held in confidence. Held, held in confidence, and it should. I mean, our job is to get the most amount of money. So, yeah. and I love when people will say to me, "So, uh, what do you think the buyer will take?" Like during those. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, the seller agent's <laughs> yeah. call. Like, so yeah. What, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think the seller will take? Yeah. And I always say, if the full price, uh, I was like, well, I'm guessing list price is 600000 so I'm guessing 600000 or more, <laughs> you know. I actually just re-upped my code of ethics course, um, mm-hmm. right, actually while I was sick with COVID. Um, and they they have a whole section in the code of ethics that addresses not um, disclosing what the seller, if they've given you that number. Yep. So not only is it a fud- fiduciary responsibility and a confidential responsibility mm-hmm. to our sellers, same thing goes on vice versa with our buyers, but it's also a violation of our code of ethics, just Mm -hmm. as an FYI, as a realtor. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So that's why we have to have that strong uh, delineation. So with the listing agreements, there are different types of listing agreements. The one that our office uses is the exclusive right to sell listing. What is it? Uh, exclusive right to sell listing agreement with consent to designated agency because mm-hmm. we're a designated office and consent to dual agency. Yep. So it's already written in there that there is an opportunity or a potential that we could sell one of our own listings. The other type of listing contract that's similar when you go through a company is exclusive right to sell listing agreement with consent to designated agency, but not dual agency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're consenting that, okay, I understand that you're designated agency. Let me talk about that for one minute too. And I know I'm over talking, but this is an important subject. Like you said, you could do a whole radio show just on this. I really could. So I'm going to bring you back to how it was so you can understand how it is now. So I think it was 2015, if my memory serves me correctly, to 2015. When we did designated? 2010, no. Are you looking for TRID? No, 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 no. It's pre-me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm 2011. It was 2005. That things changed. So I added, uh, whatever, 10 years. The decade. Yeah, I think it was 2005 that everything had changed from, you know, this designated agency thing. Because buyer's agency was not a, a thing at all. That's, I find that crazy. It's crazy. I find that crazy. So the way that it used to work was, let's just say, um, I work for ABC Real Estate. And ABC Real Estate has several offices. They have one in Pembroke. They have one in Marshfield. They have one in Situate. They have one in Duxbury, Hanson, all over, right? All these different towns. And if I, as an agent, got a listing, not as a broker, but as an agent, I got a listing in, let's just say, I got one, let's even just say Rehoboth, that I got a listing in Rehoboth. And no, no, let's say I got a listing in Marshfield, okay? So I have a listing, a new listing in Marshfield, but I also, ABC Realty also has a firm or an office where one firm, several offices in Rehoboth. That person brings, it's, you know, his sister wants to buy my listing in Marshfield. The way it was before is that agent from Rehoboth that also works at ABC Realty was a seller's agent. Supposedly, he was representing the seller. Never met the seller, doesn't know the seller. Now, you tell me who his fiduciary responsibility is. That was because is. of the type of... So, what was it? Designated? It, it wasn't anything. It That's was when just, they came up with designated. Agent, it was just agency. So, agency meant you represented the seller regardless of what mm-hmm. your relationship was with the client that you were representing. Everybody in that office represented everybody else's seller. So, it's a difference between having a contract with a specific agent or having a contract with the company. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, that's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. And now it's changed. So, now let's just say I still work for ABC Realty. I am the listing agent. The only person that represents the seller is me. As a designated agent. As a agent. designated agent. Mm-hmm. We, uh, not to cut you off, but we sort of talked about this um, when we were op- uh, doing open houses. Mm-hmm. Recently, within the past few months, when we did an office meeting, we sort of had to s- reset our mind frame of when, you know, you can't do one of your open houses, but you have another agent mm-hmm. do it. Who do they represent? Mm-hmm. Because your does your client have uh, an agreement with you as an agent, or does your client have an agreement with the company? company that you work mm-hmm. for. Yeah. So we sort of had to go through this with all of our agents just to make sure that everybody was sort of on the same page and knew exactly, mm-hmm. you know, who they represented when when mm-hmm. they go there. And I checked in with Charlie Burke on that. So Charlie Burke owns Real Estate Academy for Real Estate in Braintree and uh, Wood, Wood, what is that, Wood Road or Wood, whatever, yeah. Wood something or other. Braintree. Braintree. In Braintree. And we had the discussion of that. So if you are a designated agent and you are not available to do an open house and you ask another agent from your firm to do that open house, who do you represent? Well, Mm -hmm. really, you have to get permission from your seller, first of all. Hey, are you okay with me doing this? And they might say, yeah, so long as they're representing me. 100%. 100%. So that's how, but not that you as the listing agent would go ahead and say, oh, well, they told me to take 500 for the house, you know, no. but some agents, I'm telling you, there have been times we got a listing one time. Chitter chatter. Yeah. And again, this is not to upset anybody. I'm not saying any names, but we got a listing one time because the other agent, the sellers brought in a mole. Oh, yeah. And the, it was friends of theirs. So not an actual mole, somebody yeah. to kind of yeah. like check on the open house and how the agent was conducting the open house and how the activity was. And mm-hmm. um, that person was 
uh, let's not, not say a mole. They were spying. They were spying. They were spying. And the agent who was doing the open house, the listing agent at the time, said, they're going through a terrible divorce. Just give me any offer. They'll take it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Could you imagine? Because that's a big no. <laughs> okay. That, yeah, that is. Um, and if that ever happened in our office, that agent would not be working in our office. But um, anyways, so those are the things that you have to consider when you're thinking about agency. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, that's why we are a designated agent. So we are the only people that represent that seller or that buyer. And that's a conversation too. So just with designated agency and dual agency. So with our, the listing agreement that we use, so it has the exclusive right to sell with designated agency and consent to dual agency. That's a conversation that we're having with the sellers way before we Mm -hmm. get to the listing contract portion is talking about our representation for them as a seller's agent under a designated office, as well as our option to do dual agency and how it functions between our team. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're not having those conversations personally, I'd, there's a little, I'd be sus. It's mm-hmm. sus. Well, just to bring it back to like, you know, different ways to list your home, whether it goes into MLS or not, when you sign a listing agreement with a client, do you feel like the best way to properly represent them is to put it in MLS or to not have it in MLS? You ask my, me personally? You, uh, well, both of you, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> I mean, I know the answer, but... So I'll, I'll use me personally. I think the only way, the, I shouldn't say the only way. I guess everybody's situation is different. So you really have to look at people situationally. Like my personal house was sold to me by a family member of Sam's. So there there was no MLS. And that's actually when we get to for sale by owners, that's what a majority of them end up being is family members selling to family members or friends or some somebody within their close sphere of, sphere of influence, right? Um, but for us, I mean, we had this happen last year where there was a house that um, they had had us come out and do a market analysis. We had sellers that asked us to come out. And during that time frame, they said, oh, well, you know what? I was talking to my next door neighbor and my next door neighbor's daughter is actually looking to try and move down here. And I told them that I would show them the house. And I go, I was like, you know what? Absolutely show them the house if they love it. Let's, let's see what we can make work and how we can do this. And they did ultimately end up liking it. But I said, okay, so here are your options. Okay, we can either sell to them at this price, at what they're offering us, or you can go into MLS. They still have the opportunity to put in an offer and then also see what else could potentially be out there um, and expose yourself to the most amount of buyers. Because right now you have one small sample size. Whereas if you go into MLS, you are exposed to all of the different buyers that are potentially out there for your house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and that and that made the buyer very upset, of course, because the buyer is looking out for themselves. The buyer wants the house and not to have any of the competition, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the seller needs to be considering what's best for them. Mm-hmm. So what was best for the seller was to go into MLS, and ultimately we ended up selling for like fifty thousand dollars more. I think mm-hmm. with- so. So it, it it's it's the difference between wanting to do what you think is right for or wanting to be a nice person and give somebody a leg up in this crazy market or doing what's best for your financial future, which is ultimately getting Mm -hmm. the most amount of eyeballs on your house. And Mm -hmm. well, I think with your situation and maybe a lot of like for sale by owners, it's, it it is situational because they're selling to somebody that they know. So they're not using a real estate agent. You guys just happen to be real estate agents. Like Mm -hmm. Sam is Holly's son. Like, so that's why a real estate agent was sort of involved and you guys know, okay, like, Yes, obviously we're not taking advantage of you. This is the process. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. But in a lot of other cases, it might be, okay, I'm hiring a real estate agent, but I don't want to have that sort of exposure. You know, there might be something going on in somebody's life where you don't want everybody to know. So it's sort Absolutely. of like, it, mm-hmm. it, like I don't want to say like it's in somebody's pocket. Like, you know, I have this home for sale type of thing. Or, no, that's what they call them as a pocket listing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, that, that could be, it could be situational with that. But, um, but if you're hiring a real estate agent, that is a way to sell your house is not to go on the market, but is that really getting you the best potential to 
if your goal is to make money mm-hmm. <laughs> off of it, um, you know, is it, is it good? And I think the frustration that Sharon had spoke to one of our agents about was it's hard when you're a buyer represent, like when you're representing a buyer and there are like quote unquote pocket listings, but you don't know about them because they're not anywhere. Mm-hmm. So an actual pocket listing and correct me if I'm wrong, but a mm-hmm. pocket listing is when a one, one agency is only allowing that agency to show their property. So mm-hmm. say we, we don't do this at Boston Connect Real Estate, um, but say Boston Connect Real Estate, just for the sake of it, um, George? George? Yeah, we got a caller, the Tom from oh. Kingston. Okay. Oh, the Tom from Kingston. The Tom from Kingston. Hello, hello. How are you, Tom? <laughs> I'm doing good. Good to hear you, ladies. <laughs> nice to hear from you, too. What are your thoughts on all of this? Well, I got a couple of things I wanted to say. Before I get to my question, the person that says, hey, if you're interested in the house, make an offer because mm-hmm. they're going through an ugly divorce or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. I liked that because, if nothing else, when the couple came in, they're looking around. If they're interested, it at least starts a conversation with that couple. And mm-hmm. let's see what they come in for an offer and say, well, you know, it's got to be reasonable. They're not going to let it go for nothing. You know, it's a house worth 500 They're not going to let it go for four. Mm-hmm. But at least you get somebody interested yep. rather than well, just walking to, through and, again, and saying, well, thank you. So as long as we have permission from the seller to disclose what is going on, then oh, we, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, we can certainly say that. But from a legal <laughs> perspective, we are not allowed to say that. And in that yeah. situation, she was not allowed to say that. They didn't want anyone knowing there was a divorce going on. Oh, it was a different time, too, because it, what happened is that you didn't um, – what was it? They didn't want, like, it almost puts people in a, in a higher position for negotiating. They think that people are mm-hmm. desperate. Mm. So when I get to my question, my question is, you have a home up for sale for 400 and I say, okay, I'm interested, and I put in an offer for the 400 and then you come back to a Tom, somebody put a bid higher than that. Am I able to find out what that higher amount is? Or is that a confidentiality that you can't tell me what the next bid was? Say, for example, it's 410, 420. Mm-hmm. Again, and time's up. Comes, Answer is? Yeah, yeah. So, and again, so what ends up happening is this is really up to the seller as well, but I would say that it's more of a. I would say like a inside, like an industry type respect type thing that we really don't disclose what those are because we want everybody to come up with their highest and best offer. And, you know, the, people will do escalation clauses, like I'll give you $1,000 more than the highest offer not to exceed X. You know, so people will do those types of things, too. But we always try legal? to get. Yeah. And, but we always say yeah. we don't want escalation clauses. Just give us X. Okay. So we're, we're always trying from a seller perspective to get people up as high as what their as threshold possible. is. Right. Okay. So what we might do is if we had multiple offers, we may go back to all of the buyer's agents and just say, hey, just wanted to you know, make this fair for everybody. We've ended up with seven offers. When you submitted yours, there was only two. So we have seven total offers, and we're just asking everybody to come up with their highest and best. They might ask questions to try to find out from us, and we could say things like, we have very strong offers. Yep. So it could be strong with contingencies. It could be strong with money. It could be strong with finances, no home inspection. I mean, there's lots of ways it could be strong. So I guess the way and, and something, the, the way I always tend to explain it is it wouldn't behoove the seller. The seller may give us permission to say, all right, you can disclose to all of the other offers that I have an offer for 410. But then what's likely going to happen is anybody else that has an offer and they might come back with a 412. For fifteen, for isn't that a good thing? Potentially, but what if we? What in the same scenario if we said we have an we have higher offers? Give us your highest and best. Now the the power is in the vagueness of what we're saying. So now it's left up to the buyer to decide is what is higher than my offer? Is it yeah. five thousand dollars higher? Is it ten thousand dollars higher? We had yeah. So we had a good example. Tom is over the summer spring last year. Yeah. We had one offer that was two hundred and twenty five thousand over the list price. But it was also forty five thousand dollars over the highest offer. The other the next highest offer. 
Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 45000 more than what our second highest offer was. We had a lot of offers on that property. So by not saying anything, it really does leave it up to the emotional value that each individual buyer has and how badly do they want the house. And I also think that once you give out a number to somebody, you'll never get a dollar more than that. Exactly. Yeah, it's like it, they're going to, it's almost like you start to get into this auction period where it's like, all right, I'll give you $1,000 more. I'll give you $2,000 yeah. more. It's exactly the same thing. So, so okay, so I told you that, you know, we have a 410 offer. Then that offer gets accepted. Something falls apart and it goes back on the market. Well, you know that that offer was for 410. So why would you offer more than 410 for that house? Very true. Right. You might even you know? come in lower. So, yeah. you know, uh, uh, yeah, it might even come in. Okay, they, they offered I'll 410. Say, I'm going to give you 49. Yeah, you know, come in 408, <laughs> and we can do the closing this week if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know. I personally don't think that it's it's doing a service to, if you represent the seller, I don't think that it's giving um, giving great service So if there's a house on the market, just so I understand this, and we'll say 400, the, back to that example, and now... Somebody's I put an offer on the house for the four hundred, full asking price. And Sharon, you come back to me. Sorry, Tom, somebody got a higher bid in there. They're mm -hmm. offering more than the list price. Mm -hmm. And I say, Okay, so where do I go from here? Well, give me your best price. Mm -hmm. And if I said uh four ten, you'll say, Okay, I'll put that offer in. Then we need to you can come back and say, Well, I'm sorry, somebody put in a higher price or am I out at that point? Well, you would be working with an agent, so, right. you know, yeah, so we would say to the agent, yeah, unfortunately, he didn't come up high enough, you know, so. So can I put in another offer at that point? Well, it matters how many times we can go back and forth. So one of the things that, like, you know, having conversations with your agent, this is one of the biggest pieces of advice. We talk about this all the time at the office, too, is have your buyer's agent call the listing mm -hmm. agent and have a conversation. Because okay. if I had this conversation with your listing agent and they, or your buyer's yeah. agent and they said, you know what, my client Tom really loves the house. We're going to bring it up to 410. But honestly, just so you know there potentially could be some room for negotiation if need be, right? So if, to me, okay. that would be a terrible buyer's agent, but that's a side point, okay? Mm -hmm. So then if we have the two offers and I'm sitting with my seller, I can say, you know what? This guy, Tom from Kingston, the Tom from Kingston, the his, Tom. That's right. his, his <laughs> agent, who should be Sharon McNamara, by the way, yeah. <laughs> his, his agent informed me that there is a potential for him to negotiate again. So he has better terms and conditions. He's waiving his home inspection. He doesn't have anything to sell. He's putting more than 50% down. Why don't we just go back to him and see if we can get him up to 415? Okay, yeah. And then I can go back to your, your agent and say, hey, we have a counter offer for you. My client would like to, you know, if you if your client will come up to four fifteen, the house would be his. So there's definitely room to go back and forth. I like that. Yeah, I without like that. having conversations, if the buyers agents don't call us, Tom, right. we've had situations where we've gotten forty offers on properties, and agents wow. don't even send us a text message to let us know that they've sent us an offer. Never mind call us. They don't even mm -hmm. tell us. You know, something we had one time something got lost in spam. Remember? Yeah. And they're like, oh, we just want to make sure that you got our offer. And we're like, no, thank you for calling because we didn't. It's terrible. Yeah. It all really does come down to communication. Mm -hmm. And like when I started here with a disclaimer, everybody does everything a little bit differently. But we're all we're all playing in the same sandbox here. Right. So we just bring yeah. different color logos. But if we get together and say, hey, what do we have to do to get this together? We can We can have some conversations on, you know, hey, I'll let my seller know. We can't make the decisions, but our sellers can. Yeah. Let me give you another hypothetical. One of the things that concern me about open house, I got a New England colonial home that I want to sell, and you're going to have an open house for me. And um, the agent that's showing the home or doing the open house is right there in the kitchen sitting down, and they have, I think the last time I was out there, they have a pen and paper, sign your name if you want. Mm -hmm. if you're in, but two more couples come in at the same time, and one starts going upstairs. Does anybody go with them? 
uh, <laughs> well, typically uh, the agent wouldn't just be sitting down and letting people walk in the house without, you know, greeting them. Oh, Usually does. Um, uh, one of, yeah, our, agents, one of our, agents, of our agents, yeah, yeah. one of our agents, Matt, um, if he's doing an open house by himself, he stands, um, he has a, a table that he sets up um, usually out right out front of the house. He And he's the first person um, that, that people see, what, you know, even before they park their car. You know, yeah. he's the curb appeal. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> he used to be a model. He used to be a model. He is the curb appeal he for sure. Appeal. Yeah, he always has a funny meme on the table and everything. But yeah. you sign in and he, you know, greets you and he, he tells you a little bit about the house, you know, and he, he, especially if you're with your agent, you know, he's conversating with them. Um, if, you know, just personally. He's the gatekeeper. You can't get in without going by him. He's the gatekeeper. Uh, when our team has done open houses with all of us, you know, we sort of designate an area of where we're all being. I'm usually at the door because nobody can get by me without signing in. Mm -hmm. um, and especially during COVID, we were, you know, teaming up and doing these things to regulate only 10 people in the house. Could you slide in one couple at a time or one person at a time to look at um, the home? Not right now. No, we not right now. To. I mean, there was a time during COVID where, you know, we had to regulate how many people were in the house and sure. sort of just let everybody know. Um, I just know from personal experience doing open houses that I was typically at the door signing people in, making sure, keeping count of how many people, if Mary or Sharon was the other person I was doing the open house with, they would be the ones walking around and making sure everybody, you know, if you have any questions, please, you mm -hmm. know, feel free to ask okay. and sort of thing. So no one's really uh, left alone and everybody signs in at our open houses at least yeah. and if we have that that layout of a house like what you're talking about right. where it is a little bit more awkward so i'm thinking of susan coin's house that we did in abington yep. we had somebody at the front door and then like so we we know like what we feel is best for our listings but if i had a situation where it was difficult for me to see the front door i certainly wouldn't be hanging out in the kitchen i would be where people have to see me first yeah i think we right. did that open house yeah. together yeah. yeah yeah so and there are definitely times where somebody might sneak past and I'll say, oh, uh, ma'am, just so you know, I, I really do need you to sign in for liability purposes. So if you wouldn't mind just waiting one second and I can tell you a few things about the house. So we okay. definitely have all eyes on. And, you know, there was a time too, Tom, where, you know, Mark and I, we were busy with the kids and doing all these things. And again, I, can you believe I've been doing this for almost 21 years? Yeah. I know, we're getting old, Tom. Um, <laughs> oh, you're getting old. I'm not. I stay 39. <laughs> well, I'm going to call it levels from now on. I listen to a website, and it's like, I'm at level 53 right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're beating the yeah. game. I'm right at level 53. But... Um, what was I starting to say? Oh, Mark would always do open houses with me. I mean, there was also a time where for security reasons, we never wanted to be by ourselves. Yeah. Well, that was what I was just about to say is, you know, it, for, it's not just safety for everybody coming to our open houses, but it's safety for us. And we have to be up to date and, and, and be aware of our surroundings as well, because we're literally telling the world where we're going to be if we're going to be alone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is that could be an issue for our safety. So, um, you know, I've we had always... A couple situations in my in my career yeah like that. we always especially with you know new construction mm -hmm. um you know it, it can be tough sure. so um you always but i'm have talking to be like aware. an established home when you have an established home and the three bedrooms are upstairs and you're downstairs and like i said more than one party comes in at a time mm -hmm. because it's listed as from one to three or whatever it may be listed as mm -hmm. i'd be concerned somebody might be going through my top bureau drawer on the right hand side where i keep those silver bars yeah, so that's why we tell our clients don't have anything like that hanging around. No medicine, no, no, no prescription ring. drugs, no yeah, diamond no rings, no, you know, any no yeah. guns, no, you know, no weapons, nothing like that should okay. be around the house. Yeah. So because, yeah, there are many times where people are going to be up in your bedrooms without us there. But we also do sort of swing around like, yeah. hey, just wanted to check in. Is everything OK up there? You know, um, yeah. so if there was only one of us at a time in the house. Now, if okay. they're, you know, when you're listing your house, we put a lockbox on. So the agent it might be an agent from another company that is showing the property. Sure. The, the, the onus is on them at that point to always be with their client as they're walking around. So. <laughs> they have to make sure that, you know, the house is now, they're protecting the house as well. So and it's, it's, it would be very uncommon during an open house if we were here, if, if for some reason we were talking to another prospective client that was coming in or buyer and we heard rummaging through your actual drawers, 
that yeah. that's a red flag immediately because nobody's opening your dresser drawers. You know, they might be open in the closet, you know, checking yeah. out things like that. Maybe right. op- opening the medicine cabinet, something that's attached, but not necessarily, you know, hmm. your drawer. And too, Tom, if you think about it, I mean, if it's if there's only a couple people in the house at a time, then we're definitely wandering around. Yeah. Hey, do you have any questions? Is anything I can oh, help yeah. you with? Sure. But if it's a very busy, busy open house, chances of somebody opening your underwear drawer while somebody very, else is in the room true. with them. <laughs> Probably slim to none. Right. You know? yeah. As an example, we I actually attended open houses this whole entire weekend, mm-hmm. um, and there was wow. one. Uh, it was of uh, 1880. The house was built. It was in Whitman. Steep staircases on on both the front and the back of the house. But when I say that this house was a revolving door, there there must have been 20 people in at any given point in time all messed up and Mm -hmm. you know everybody walking through but they had one agent stationed in the kitchen kind of like almost right at the front entry and then another upstairs just in case there were any questions and uh, there wouldn't have been an opportunity for me to like you know itch my bum Mm -hmm. like like without (laughs) being seen like i couldn't have done anything or Mm -hmm. like take off my mask so i could breathe so when open houses are that active um i agree with sharon wholeheartedly i don't think that's what I think when people are probably on their best behavior. Yeah, because the chances of them trying to get in and get something and escape are, you know, pretty, it would be pretty difficult for them to do. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like when when it's the one-on-one with the mm-hmm. agent and one singular client. Yeah. That's when at least the hairs on the back of my neck go up because mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, where's the next person? Yeah, I had to call the, the police a couple times at oh, situations. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's funny, I heard on the... Uh on the uh, radio back last week, how many homes are up for sale across the country? Mm-hmm. And it was like 285,000 homes up for sale. But they said back in 2019, mm-hmm. it was between seven and 900,000 mm-hmm. homes up for sale. What a yep. change in the market. And We're in a scary place right now. <laughs> it's very interesting, yeah. and it's because, I mean, we have such low inventory, and that's why, I mean, next week we'll continue this topic about, you know, the different types of listings and agents trying to be creative and saying, oh, I have somebody for your house. They really don't. They want the listing because they know they're always going to probably get paid or, hey, you know what, we have an in-house listing. Like, just list it with my firm only, and one of my agents will sell it because now these bigger firms who have big overhead are really worried about how they're going to be able to sustain sustain low inventory situations. Mm -hmm. So they're trying Mm to, I'd say, hoard all the listings and keep them Uh, in-house. Sure. So that was one of the, that was the topic we were actually going to discuss tonight. Um, But I thought agency was important to discuss first. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I know with you, Tom, I mean, I know that I've done, you know, some analysis for you and your family over the years, and you've ended up selling two family members. So, I mean, that's a good example of, you know, you're yeah, doing it sort of... that was of really like, weird. My sister, yeah. well, my parents, well, my mother passed away, and then, you know, Dad had mm-hmm. to go live with my sister, and she mentioned it at the church. She said, yeah, yeah we're going to sell Mom and Dad's house, blah, blah, blah. Hey, we're looking for a fixer-upper. Because mm-hmm. we weren't going to do anything. We had knob and tube. Well, we saw everything that was involved with that. Mm-hmm. Lead paint, knob and tube, you know, the whole works. Yep. Needed a new roof. Mm-hmm. So something that you and I would smash down and build up brand new. Mm-hmm. And, and again, say, oh, you're... Well, you're interested. S- yeah, you're selling it to a family member, so you're, uh, there's almost that emotional connection as well that at that point you are like, okay, this seems fair and reasonable, I'm going to go with it, but if we put it on the market, potentially we could have got your family $50,000 more. But again, right. the, the motivation was different. It's, different. it's an inheritance, and you were happy with it, you were happy that your family member got it. But, you know, doing a for sale by owner, we'll have the statistics next week, you know, for the most part, agents are able to get you know, we are getting more, even putting in our compensation, we're gaining you more money because we have, and that's the thing, all firms are the same. We're a boutique. And also a, less headaches. Yeah. I know Ex- a, I know of a person many years ago that for sale by owner and ended up a lot of headaches, end up in court. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, because yeah. you say the wrong thing. Yep, yep for sure. Definitely. And that's the other thing, too, is, you know, even, you know, people are like, oh, I'm not going to give you that much compensation. It's so easy to sell your house. No matter what size the company is, like this is with us being a boutique, mm-hmm. we have this thing called the Internet. So it doesn't matter if you're a huge box firm, if you're mm-hmm. a medium-sized firm, or you're a small little boutique, because we think great things come in small packages. <laughs> we have that one-on-one, you know, with, right. with our clients that... Mm-hmm. 
we we have we put something on the internet it goes to the same exact places as all those big box firms so we feel as if you know when people are marketing those firms as well again nothing against them don't put down the little boutiques because you know what we have the same exact resources and tools and we also have the you know the the genuine one-on-one relationship with our clients as you know tom as you know tom right (laughs) Well, thank okay. you so much. I mean, it took up so much time, but I really appreciate that information. Well, thank you, Tom, and Happy New Year to you and Patsy. Tell her I said hello. Thank you. I definitely will. Mm-hmm. Thank you, All ladies. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Again, that was Tom from Kingston. He always has great, you know, conversations and insight into what our topics are. Uh, we're coming down to our final minute here. Do you want to just let people, Melissa, know that we'll have this topic next week and how they can find our shows? Yeah, if you go to talkrealestateroundtable.com, you can listen to all of our past shows. Go on your podcast app and just type in Talk Real Estate Roundtable, Boston Connect Real Estate. Uh, yeah, like us on Facebook no. and Instagram. And yeah. bostonconnect.com, find all of our information. Yeah, so we will see you next week and we will have this topic on how you should sell your house. We'll talk to you later. Bye, George. See ya.